Hey guys, and welcome back to the More Now podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Zach. Hello, I am the other one, Dan. Exactly. So, before we get into this episode, as always, go ahead and do us a favour, hit that like button if you find yourself enjoying this one. It really helps out. We do appreciate it, and it does help to promote the podcast. And of course, Dan, what is promoting the podcast? Spreading the Halloween love. Exactly, because it is the spooky special. Uh, yep. Which, by the way, I found out recently, we haven't done a proper spooky special since uh, episode, like, 15. We're now on, like, 39, I think. When was that, 2022? Probably, yeah. Something like that. Which, uh, actually, uh, yeah, it would be 2022, yeah, crazy. Um, and before we get into the Moronic or Not section, I just want to do a little uh, public service announcement. Uh, we know the episodes have been a bit uh, hit and miss recently, in terms of when they're coming out and all that. Uh, to be honest, we, we've been busy. I've been on holiday, Dan's doing some stuff. Uh, we do have a life outside of doing this podcast, so sorry, not sorry, I guess. Uh, we'll come back properly with a Conspiracies episode, hopefully next month, um, but no promises. It'll just come out randomly, you just have to catch it right yeah, pretty place, much. right time. But... Follow us on Instagram and you'll be notified whenever um, we put out a new episode. And uh, hit the notification bell on YouTube because then you definitely won't miss one. Yeah. So subscribe. Anyway, uh, we're now going to move into more on the comment section where if you guys are new here, this section is where we get five random words or short phrases from you lovely viewers and collectively decide whether that word or thing is moronic or not it's in the name. Uh, that can be the concept, it can be the thing itself, or it can be from one of our personal experiences. And the beauty of it is that it's entirely subjective. I mean, you guys can have an entirely different opinion, and it doesn't matter because it's just a bit of fun. Right, should we get so, into it? The first one, because it's the spooky special, these are Halloween themes, by the way. Uh, haunted houses. Um... And I'm not talking. I'm not talking like the crappy ones that you do in primary school. You know when you when your parents take you to a haunted house and all spooky, uh, when it's just a bunch of people dressed up. I'm talking like going to somewhere that is actually haunted. Well, uh, actually said to be haunted. The Tower of London is said to be the most haunted place in the UK. There's people that do like um, attractions. You know those um, ghost... Oh, there's like they're those ghost hunts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where there's like... Um, like someone takes you around um, a place that's meant to be haunted, but it's yeah. like elaborately, it's pretty much elaborately staged. Oh, yeah. Let's wait. Um, um, do you remember yeah, a I... funny, funny show that me and you used to watch? Uh, Most, oh, haunted. Most Haunted. Yeah, that was um, this program is for entertainment. Per... Yeah, they pretty much say that the, um, the entire show is fake. From oh, yeah. Literally the first screen. I mean, I don't, I don't believe that, Dan. Because think about it, Morgan, Morgan, and uh, whatever the other people and were Rice. that we were that we used to make fun of. Uh, is he still on Amazon? I'm having a look right now. I'm having a look if he's still on Amazon Prime. Uh, Pretty much anything is on Amazon. Prime. I don't have Amazon Prime on my phone. Uh, he literally is viewers. just a dumping ground for films. You're not wrong, but then you've got to pay for half of them, even though you already pay for Amazon and you get yeah, ads. No, it's ridiculous. I'm, I'm not going to go into the annoying pieces of Amazon Prime right now. Instead, I'm going to find out whether Most Haunted or not is still on Prime. Uh, right. Search. Most. No, I don't want Most Wanted. Most, most Haunted. Wanted. Uh, oh, my. Wait. We've got America's Most Haunted. That's not it. Oh, my God. It's not anymore. No. Shit, they took it off. Yeah. Shit. It's not even on Amazon. Like, it's not yeah. even actually on Amazon. It's just not even on anything now. Is that really a thing? They took it off. Absolute pricks. I was I was gonna watch that. I was never gonna watch it, viewers. I was never gonna. Um but yeah, uh, I don't know what it's on now. Oh wait, no, hold on. No, that's just called cool. that's a film called Haunted. Great. You know what? I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a quick they, Google. They, they always would get like a, a psychic medium. Oh yeah, um, was his name Derek something or other, right? Derek Cora. Yeah. Most and, and you know what? You know what say like there's no official records of this person existing. Holy fuck, damn! Like, it, it would just be bullshit. Damn. 2002 to 2019, it had 23 seasons. 
I didn't even know it was on in 2019. Neither did I. It has 23 seasons. Jesus Christ. Oh my God, you can go... To, you, there's a thing called Most Haunted Experience. Oh my God. 2025 events. I might have to have a look at this. Bruh. Oh my God, you can view full episodes on YouTube. Right, viewers, pause pause this episode right now. Go and watch your Most Haunted episodes on whatever pirated site you want. Or find it legitimately. <laughs> we're not condoning piracy, but if you can't find it, use YouTube. Um... And genuinely, watch one and come back, because otherwise you're not going to understand half this, but it's really bloody yeah. funny. Uh, I can't believe it had 23 seasons. That's insane. Oh, it's only got a 5... It's only got a 5.0 uh, out of 10 uh, rating oh, on IMDb. Oh, no. Right, I'm rating it 10 star. I think mo- most people with an IQ above 70 would probably realise that it's just fake. Well, joke's on you, because I've just rated a 10 star, because it's amazing. <laughs> right, all cast and crew, right, let's have a look. Uh, I don't recognise any of these people. Oh, that's why, that's just the directors. I think I recognise, like, one or two, and then that's about it. Yvette Fielding. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Derek Okora is the self, is the spiritualist medium. In 125 episodes from 2002 to 2005. Jesus Christ. So he quit after 2005, probably because he tanked his bloody career. I think he died. Oh. <laughs> oh no, 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 yeah, I know for a fact he did. He, he's uh, sadly no longer with us, but... Hold on. I don't think that's right. Because he's got a film from 2018. I don't know. Sorry, a TV series. It says Derek Accor's Past Hunters TV series. Psychic Medium 2018. So you've lied, Apparently... I've just looked at the controversy on Wikipedia. Apparently, medium Derek Akura was supposedly possessed by an entity. Understandable. Sometimes evil or some, sometimes evil or sometimes quote unquote lost and confused. I don't know if that made any sense at all, but that's yeah, that makes perfect sense. Literally, what Wikipedia said. Uh, he was in an episode of Doctor Who. Yeah, I know, apparently, I know, yeah, I know the exact episode. He made a cameo in that. Was he talking to ghosts? Um, no, it was. It was an episode about. Yeah. Uh, the episode was about how like ghosts were sort of visiting Earth, and then he made a cameo saying, "Oh, I'm pretty much useless now." <laughs> yeah, true. Um, okay, well, yeah, he, he's still kicking, I think. So uh, Dan's lied and said he yeah. died when he didn't. Uh-huh. Anyway. We did. Let's get back on to uh, more on our section instead of most haunted. Uh, haunted houses. Moronic. Yeah, I'm going moronic as well. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, pumpkin patches. So going to a place where pumpkins grow. Um, Thoughts? I don't really do all that, like pumpkin. I'm going to be honest, Dan. Halloween's a very American thing, and because we're Brits, we're going to tone it down a lot, because all we do for Halloween as Brits, you put some decorations up in front of the house if you've got kids. If you don't, you're a bit noncy. Uh, and then, yeah, kids go out from like 6pm to 8pm, and then that's, that's it. That's really about it. Yeah, yeah that's in it. In the US, they take, in the US, they, they of course, take it years. much bigger, because America does everything bigger. Um Take that as you as you wish. Maybe not better, but no, that's why I didn't say that. I just said bigger. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Thoughts on pumpkin patches? I don't. I don't really do. I don't. I, pumpkins no. probably cost quite a bit. I'm. I'm sure they like. I don't think they do, sell... mate. Was his Halloween, and they probably sell them for like thirty quid a pumpkin or something. Nah, so. Dan, you live in the most apocalyptic hyperinflation Weimar Germany-esque world but genuine like I think pumpkins are like a fiver if that I could be wrong but funnily enough I've never gone pumpkin shopping so let's have a look I'm gonna go on fucking Asda on Asda's website and look for pumpkins because if you think about it Halloween and Christmas is just an excuse for like companies to sell you shit pumpkin right Asda pumpkin is 
189. I thought it'd be a lot worse. No, it, they're about they're about one to two quid from what I can see. Oh, uh, so I don't know where the fuck you were getting thirty quid from, Dad. Um, I, 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 I just imagined um, some idiot farmer just like selling pumpkins a week before Halloween, at, like and and the same price. So I, I thought I thought someone they probably do in America. I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, um, I'm going to go not moronic because I, there's nothing inherently wrong with them. Yeah, I'll go not moronic. All right, the next one I've got a fun fact about and any arachnophobes, sorry, not sorry. Uh, spiders. Well... Now, would you like to know... Yeah. They do. Would you like to know a very fun fact about spiders? Yes. Any arachnophobes... Um, you can either skip ahead by a couple of seconds or you can suffer. Up to you. Uh, basically, there's a thing called uh, spider rain. Oh, right. In places called Brazil. Places called Brazil. What the fuck? Uh, basically, places like Brazil and Australia. Of, uh, course. of course. It yeah. would be Australia, wouldn't it? Uh, it would. Where basically, when spiders migrate, I don't know when that is, uh, but when they migrate, uh, small spiders spin silk threads to catch the wind. And travel through the air. Uh, oh, it's, right. it's it's known as ballooning. Um, when right. they kind, of, they basically build themselves a parachute, basically, and then they get carried by the wind. Uh, and a lot of people, uh, because there's a lot of spiders that do it, obviously at the same time, uh, it can create the illusion of spiders raining from the sky. So spider rain. Oh, that's weird. It's got no connection to Halloween other than spiders are a spooky thing, apparently. So. Well, it's yeah. Australia. You, I mean, you, you go there, it's... I mean... I'm not going to say it's a guaranteed death sentence, but... No, it's it's just, you know, you're going to get attacked by at least yeah. 80% of the wildlife. And maybe about 20% of the people. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that that's a fun fact about spiders for you. So, yeah. Yeah, I have nothing against them, so I'll go knock my on it. What's the how? What's the biggest spider you've ever seen in person? It's honestly not that big. Really? Um, nah. See, I've seen. Well, actually, when I was very young, I went to one of my friend's birthday parties, and he had one of those like animal themed ones, uh, and I held a tarantula. Oh, right. And for like a six or seven year old, that's so cool. Because I'm like, holy shit, I'm holding a tarantula. It's like the size of my head. Anyway, um, yeah, no, the biggest one I've seen, though, is the bird-eating spider. Oh, Didn't right, hold that yeah. one. That one was in a glass box. Alive, obviously, because it was in, like, a zoo, I think. Um, but, yeah, it was fucking huge. How big are bird-eating spiders? I've just had a look at... Um... The, the biggest one ever recorded. Right. Apparently, the, the leg span, this, this is just the leg, not the actual body, Yeah. was uh, 28 centimetres. The body? The one, no, the leg. I leg span. Say. I don't think that counts the body. Body length. Yeah, no. It, it, will, it will be like bird wingspan. It will be leg. Body Top length, 280 millimetres. Bloody hell, 28 centimetres. Bloody hell. That's, now, what is that's, this a, that's a ruler. That's a school ruler. Yeah, I know. That is a massive... Uh, bird-eating spider, also known as uh, Theraposa or Theraphosa blondi. Uh, so if you're blonde, you're named after a spider. Um, found in S South America, largest spider in the world with a, a, a mass of 175 grams and up to 13 centimetres. Or five point one inches for those Americans. That's crazy. Stop looking at spiders online. Um, yep. Um, yeah. I tell you what is a what is a cool looking spider that is actually slowly being domesticated. I think is a uh, jumping spiders. Oh right, them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are absolutely tiny. Like they can fit on your fingertip. They are tiny. That really makes it scarier. No, no, no. They're they're fine. They literally they. I don't even think they have the ability to harm humans. 
Like, they're literally, they just kind of jump about. I'd like to see one in person. If anyone has a jumping spider pet, uh, reach out to me. I want to know. I want to I see it. I don't think anyone does. No, I doubt it, but you know. Australia, but... Actually, where are where are all jumping spiders from? I'm going to look. You got me curious, Dan. Uh, where Probably are... Australia, if I had to take a complete random guess. Jumping spiders found, all right. Uh... North America, US, Canada. Oh, they're just across the world, actually, except for Antarctica. So they can be found in habitats including tropical forests, temperate forests, grasslands, shrubs, and deserts. Fair. So that's kind of right. Yeah, so they're kind of just everywhere. Yeah. Are they in England? Are jumping... Are jumping spiders poisonous? No, they're not. They are venomous, but they're not poisonous. The bites are harmless, and they are not considered a large or danger to humans. Fair enough. That's good to know. Are jumping spiders in the UK? They're not common in the UK, but a rare species called the fence post jumping spider has been discovered in a nature reserve in Warrington, England. Another oh. species, the distinguished jumping spider, also found in the UK, although the family Salticade Sort of KD? I don't know. Uh, has only 37 members in the country. Don't know what that means. Um, so, and oh, and the bog dwelling jumping spider in. I'm not even going to try. Oh, right. No, that's that's the that's the spider name. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. But yeah, they are in the UK, but they're not very common. Cool. Right. Fair enough. Cool. Uh, spiders, oh, moronic or not? No, not moronic. Yeah, me too. They. they flies which are good because yeah. i hate flies so do frogs so if you want a pet frog to give a little pesky house flies, feel free uh all right the next one is black cats they seem to be unlucky they're said to be unlucky even uh and they're usually around witches well fucking black cats i mean yep i don't really know where where this sort of thing comes from but let's have a look shall we why are black cats considered spooky? Yeah, go on. All right. Superstitions of folklore that have evolved over centuries. The association between black cats and spooky or supernatural themes is rooted in the key historical and cultural beliefs. Uh, medieval Europe and witchcraft, yeah. Symbol of bad luck. Uh Obviously, Halloween connection because spooky. Uh, fear of the unknown. Wait, what? Black animals in general have historically been linked to darkness and the unknown, which humans have often feared. Okay, I'll take that word for it. Um, I guess it's just the colour, though. Yeah. So basically, if you see a black animal, uh, you're scared of it, apparently, according to. Well, that is this. kind of racist, let's face it. I mean, yeah, let's be honest, yeah. Um. They're a symbol of bad luck. In some cultures, black cats have been viewed as omens of bad luck. In places like the US and parts of Europe, seeing a black cat cross your path was thought of bringing bad fortune. This belief further reinforced their spooky reputation. Uh, and yeah, they were often linked to witches. It was believed that witches could transform into black cats. Well, they kept black oh, cats as wide, familiars. Yeah. Uh, because of this association with witchcraft, black cats were seen as symbols of, either, of evil, misfortune and sorcery. So if you've got a black cat, you're officially a witch. Or a wizard, because sorcery. Um, what do you think about witches? Do you reckon, that, do you reckon there's a witch? Witches. Do you reckon there's witches kicking about? Because <laughs> I always say Excel well, is witchcraft. Because if you're good at Excel, you're a witch. Wasn't there a university course in witchcraft? I have no idea. I think there was. There, there, there was. Um, um, there, there was one in um, like magic or something. I remember seeing this a while ago. It was so stupid. Of course, like, oh, of course, my phone doesn't fucking. Uh, yes, there have been instances where universities have offered courses related to witchcraft, though not in the sense of teaching actual witchcraft practices, rather than studying its historical, cultural, and and social contexts. Oh, so it's basically just history, religion, anthropology, and literature. 
Yeah, for, for those some... who don't know what anthropology yeah. is, it's the study of something through time. So yeah, it's basically well, you still just. Can't really do anything with that. That's actually kind of cool though. Like, can you imagine someone asked, like, "Oh, so what have you got a PhD in witchcraft?" They're gonna look at you and go, "What the fuck? What?" See, someone said to me they got a PhD in witchcraft. I'm gonna shout witch and hope people burn them. Yeah, at the but it's I mean, it is here historical we go. joke for I you. I finally got it. It's the University of Exeter. Apparently, they offer a, a master's degree. Fucking hell! What in witchcraft? Masters in magic and occult science. Fuck yeah! I'm gonna go do that. I'm gonna go get a degree. If someone asks, what would I get? I'm gonna go to a job interview in the future, right? Uh, and I'm. After I've got that degree, and they're gonna say, "So what? So it says here you've got a degree, and it says you went to Exeter University, but you haven't said what the degree is." Oh yeah, it's in witchcraft. Yeah, that is uh, what. That is so stupid. No, no I think that's good. hilarious. How many people does it have enrolled on it per year? I don't know. It doesn't say. It just says that apparently Exeter does that. What's What's it called? Um. Magic and occult science. And occult. No, not adult. Oh, oh my it, God. It, so, oh yeah. my God, Dan. So, before September 22, over 100 inquiries have been made by prospective students to go into this academic year. What the... I'm just looking at it. A lot of it is to do with religion. No, it's not. Um, it combines disciplines such as history, literature, philosophy, psychology, offering a broad academic there is study a bit of religion, esotericism, yeah. ritual magic, and alternative it, it gets, it gets really, It gets really weird. Decolonization, the oh, exploration yeah. of alternative epistemologies, feminism, somehow, anti-racism. Is that the core of this program? What? <laughs> What's racism got to do with it? I don't know. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure witches were just an Eastern Europe thing. Because we just... Fifth, oh, and obviously... You I'm know, just looking at the control. modules. 15 credit modules. I didn't <coughs> know 15 credit modules existed. Theorising Islam, Middle East, archaeology, what the fuck? Okay, Material that's gone down culture. a weird one. Let's get medieval. <laughs> that is that actually one of them? Let's get medieval. That's, that's the name of a Hell module. Yeah. I actually... I rate that. <laughs> Oh, that's actually uh, sick. I think at this point, like, universities know people just fall for their shit. And they, they have the excuse to just take the piss. And so they, they just come up with this stuff because, like, people are just going to sign up for it. Honestly, if, if I had a choice to get any degree for free, I'm taking witchcraft. Wouldn't you want a, a, an important one? No. Because that's boring. Because every... I swear to God, like, how many times are you going to go into a job interview in the future, right? Someone sits you down and say, right, you've got a degree, what have you got? Most people say finance or business or econ or economics or something like that, history, philosophy, anything like that. Nah, if someone says witchcraft, they're going to be like, ooh, that's interesting, tell me. I'll probably if someone says business for that 80th time that day, it's boring. If someone says witchcraft, you're going to be interested. If, if if I saw witchcraft, I would just laugh and then put the CV in the bin. Right. Oh, no, if anyone's got a uh, a degree in witchcraft, send your CV to me. No, I doubt that. I really want to meet someone with a degree in witchcraft now. I'll go to the University of Exeter. Yeah, I might. And just be like, right, do you have a degree in witchcraft? No? Damn. Right, next person. Do you? No. Do you? No. Shock. Because... Right. Um, Shout out to the program director, Dr. Emily C. Love. Is it a woman? Um, yeah, that is a woman. She's a witch. A I guarantee director. you she's a witch. That's the only oh, reason she's able to teach it, because she knows it. This was the medieval times. We would have burnt her at the stake or dropped her in a river. She just randomly stumbles across this video. I and honestly then, hope so. She, she, she's probably like having tea and scones right now. Unbeknownst to her, that she just got shout out on um, some on podcast, podcast averaging yeah. thirty views. You know what? If she's for some reason watching this, can you just teach me about witchcraft? I don't want the degree. Actually, no, I do. But uh, just give me the gist of what witchcraft is. Like, tell me how to brew some potions or some shit. <laughs> Get 
give me give me a wand and do me some Harry Potter Expelliarmus so BS. I, can't, I still just can't get over the fact that one of the modules is called Let's Get Medieval. Honestly, that Dan, that's just that's the title of the podcast. That's the title of this episode. We've sorted oh, it. Let's get medieval. The Legend of King Arthur. Thirty credits. King what Arthur? What's, he got, what's King Arthur and the Round Table got to do with it? I don't know. It's pretty fucking Actually, crazy. Dan, do you know which, which of King Arthur's knights built the Round Table? I have no idea. It I don't, was I don't circumference. Know about history. Yeah, that, that would make Get sense. it? Yeah. Circumference, Round Table. Come on, you're a maths whiz. That's funny. Yeah, I know. I know. I've got it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Black Cats. Moronic or not? Oh, I forgot it was Black Cats. Um, yep. <laughs> not, not Moronic. Yeah, I'm going to say not Moronic because witchcraft. Um, all right. The last one on here for this episode is Ghosts. <laughs> now, when I saw this, I'm going to be honest, we could, we could have done a conspiracy episode on this, whether our ghosts are real or not. And we still might. So maybe next year for conspiracy episode in the spooky special, um, we do like a spooky, spooky special of conspiracies. Maybe we do Ghosts. Why not? Oh, well, ghosts. Um, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, no, I because why. why the hell would I? I've just looked. Forty-five uh, percent of Americans um, think they believe in ghosts. Okay. Just trying to find some really stupid data. Um, <laughs> okay, and apparently. The 2022 YouGov poll found that 67% of Americans believe they've had at least one paranormal experience. Yeah, I know about that one. Um, watching, Amer- watching Americans on YouTube is just so funny because when they oh, start, yeah. like... They're so... Oh, they overdramatise everything. So over the top. But the thing is, like, I was in New York and D.C. recently and they're the exact same. Like, people think New Yorkers are docile. Not docile, that's the wrong word. I've said that. Uh, they're a bit more like Londoners. They are a little bit in the sense of if you don't like, they're just kind of they're just trying to go to work and all that stuff. But genuinely, I think that they are just as weird as other Americans because they are still quite over the top. Yeah. So if you're an American out there and you over dramatize everything, uh, stop. Do you know, there's an account on Instagram that has, um, they've pretty much made a living of filming people in uh, the New York subway. It's like That does not day, shock me. It's like every day they post. So I actually went on the subway while I was in uh, New York. Uh, I didn't actually see anything weird. Uh, I did see a, what I assume to be homeless lady and her child uh, selling sweets on the subway. <laughs> Which I guess is probably more economical than the beggars that hop on the tube trains begging. Um, probably a bet, yeah. yeah because then better. that way you're actually getting something back other than, well, nothing. Um, yeah. No idea if it worked or not. I don't think she sold any. Um, but it's a thing. Okay. So what do we think, Dan? What, do you believe in ghosts? Not really. Not, not really any evidence in there. I mean, yeah. I've not got any proof, and I, I, I don't really have time, energy, or effort to listen to uh, Americans. So that's fair. Moronic. Yep, fair. I'm gonna go moronic as well. Fuck you, Maurice. Um, if there's anyone called Maurice listening to this podcast right now, they are very confused. Um, all right. Well, that's that's the moronic or not section for this episode. It only took us about twenty five minutes. Um, so haunted houses, moronic pumpkin patches, not moronic spiders, not moronic black cats, not moronic ghosts, moronic. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, I've got some Halloween fun facts that I didn't get to sprinkle in during the moronic conversation. You want to hear them? Yeah, right, go for it. Yay. Uh, we can jump back to the medieval period. So let's get medieval people. Um, let's get medieval. It's worth yeah. 15 credits. Hell yeah. University of Exeter. And this better be one of them. Uh, basically, owls were viewed as omens of death and dark magic. Kind of like crows or... No, ravens are today. You know how ravens are seen as, like, the death bird? Oh, yeah. It used to be owls because, uh, basically, they come out at night. They they fly silently. Like, actually silently, by the way. That's not even a joke. 
uh, and their eerie, their quote unquote eerie calls gave them a spooky reputation, apparently. And medieval Europeans used to believe that witches could transform into owls to carry to carry out their dark deeds. So basically, witches can turn into owls and black cats, according to medieval Europe. So if you see an owl and a black cat next to each other, it's two witches. Uh, uh, before this, this is a good one. This is an amazing one. I love this. Uh, I found this out a couple of years ago, and it makes me chuckle every time I read it. Uh, basically, before Halloween became synonymous with trick or treating and sweets or candy, if you're American because you're weird. Um, basically, places in the US had unique traditions, shall we call it? Uh, so, in a place called New England, which Americans can't come up with anything new, so they put something new in front of it. Um, <laughs> Basically, October 30th was called the Cabbage Night, where local youths would uh, basically get cabbages from local gardens and farms and throw them at houses uh, or, oh, leave them, or leave them rotting in the porches, uh, which, for those who don't know, rotting cabbages stink. So, uh, yeah. And basically, the only reason they used cabbages is because they were bloody everywhere, apparently, during, during the harvest. Uh, so they were just like, all right, fine, we're just going to steal these and put it on people's um, porches, which I think we should bring that back. So if you have someone you dislike this Halloween, go and put a cabbage on their porch. Just because why not? But... This one this one is a bit morbid, but I'll, I'll tune in with a funny one afterwards. Uh, yeah. In 2005, a 42-year-old woman in Delaware hung herself from a tree uh, outside of her house. And basically everyone thought it was just a really convincing Halloween decoration. So no one called the authorities. Yeah. Uh, so basically a woman killed herself and everyone just walked by it thinking, yeah, this is normal. Um, but it wasn't. Um, yeah. Uh, moving swiftly on. Uh, candy corn, you know, the weird little uh, white, yellow and orange corn looking things. Right. That America yeah. mostly have. It was originally called chicken feed. Chicken feed? Yeah, it was invented uh, in the 1880s by a guy called uh, George Renninger. I think I said his name right. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure it was Renninger. Uh, who basically worked for a company uh, and it marketed candy corns as chicken feed because uh, its corn, its kernel shape, uh, basically at the time, corn. Corn seed was given to a lot of uh, livestock and uh, farming animals, not people. So they basically just called it uh, chicken feed instead of candy corn. Oh, right. And then in until the 1950s, when America got hold of Halloween uh, and kind of made it very sweet and candy focused. Yeah. Uh, candy corn became associated with Halloween and uh, got changed to candy corn, basically. Oh, right. So before that, it was chicken feed. And I'm now going to refer to it as that from now on. Cool. I also have a uh, relatively scary story. Oh, God. Although I, I focus on the word relatively. Okay. All right. So this happened on Kantas flight. All right. So imagine you are, you and your family are on an aeroplane right okay you're about to take off yep and you know you know where they have those screens yes. on um like the back of like of, of most planes not not uh, right in there because... no, no no they have them on long haul flights not short haul but yeah yeah not anything far under, i think anything under four hours they don't have screens but anyway yeah so imagine you are about to turn one of those screens on yep. you've God, I don't know if they use remotes or if it's touch screen. It's probably touch screen now. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You're about to turn it on and you're about to watch a film for the next probably nine and a half hours because that's how long this flight was from okay. Tokyo to Sydney. Oh, okay. Did it take nine and a half hours to get from Tokyo to Sydney? I mean, that uh, kind of makes sense, but fair enough. Uh, whatever this thing said, I think it was. I don't know. Yeah, it was nine and a half. Good. Good. But you lose control of the screen, so mm. you can't watch what you want. Damn. But instead of whatever film you're about to watch, on the screen, it's um, pretty much hardcore pornography. Oh, good. And that That is what 
all of the passengers were subjected to for nine and a half for, hours. It was it was until they fixed it because the oh. screens they um, pretty much malfunctioned at the start, oh, and right. the staff were unable to fix the fault. Right. So, um, pretty much every single person on the plane, including children, were subjected to that. I and did. to be more specific, it was a sexually explicit drama called Dadio. Okay, um, then. That played. I have no idea how. Um, I want to um, know who put that on the fucking DVR plane in the first place. Like, who... Because they have to be downloaded onto the plane's like database, I'm pretty sure, or at least plugged into a DVD player. So who put the porn on in the fucking DVD player? It's a sexually explicit drama. No, but, but also, and right? It was bad enough to get like a report on it. Yeah, obviously, but also, right? If you're on a plane, right? Say you're by yourself, you're going to Tokyo or Sydney, wherever it was going to. You're like, hmm, what do I watch on the plane? Oh, I could watch, I don't know. A Star Wars film, I could watch an Indiana Jones, I could watch The Martian, I could watch uh, Interstellar or Inception. Uh, no, I'm not watching porn. What the fuck? Who, why and is they, that even on there? Like, they, they couldn't pause it or anything, it just played. Oh, so it, it was just fully uncontrollable. It was just like, yep, you're on watching porn. Every single screen. That's actually, just, that's rough. Can you imagine, like, being... A, a parent of a ch small child at that point like no honey don't look at the screen there's uh, adult things on it don't look at the screen i assume you just put something over it right if you don't want your child to watch it i think put... that's the easy solution yeah, yeah but... the easiest solution is or just better yet turn them off like they're probably I mean, a master they switch on planes they they no no but like no no but i'm saying like the master switch on the plane there's got to be one of them surely They've got it for the no, information no, 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 safety think, videos now. So it was a big thing. There was a whole like news report. That's like that's actually crazy though. That I that would be really uncomfortable. I mean, everyone was subjected to it. Like, exactly. Like, imagine you just want to watch. I don't know. I mean, you could probably get sued for that. Almost like, definitely. It's... Like, imagine there was. I don't know, like, you, you try and put Peppa Pig on or something for your child, Paw Patrol or something, I don't know. And then you just, like, oh, what's this? Oh, why Why is there porn on the screen? I mean, they probably lost money. Almost I definitely. Uh, but on, on, on a more of a lighter note, right. there was a, a story in uh, Sky News recently. Ooh. The BBC had their turn to apologise because oh. of their weather app and they're mistaking the weather to be um, 14,408 mile an hour winds in 400 degrees Celsius in Nottingham. Bloody hell, it's a bad day to be in Nottingham, isn't it? It's bad enough that you're already up north, let alone being literally burned. Actually, you'd just be incinerated, really, wouldn't you? Well, on, on, on their polite note, they said, oops, don't be alarmed by some of our BBC weather app data this morning. So they um, just said, oops. Yeah, well, well That's funny. The, the, this guy called Mr. King, not me, <coughs> but he said um, it, it has caused some confusion. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, that was on a more lighter note. So hold that. on, hold on. How, how hot? 400 degrees Celsius. 400 degrees Celsius. All right. Uh, what... What can you cook in 400 degrees Celsius? I mean, an, an oven temperature is like half that, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. I don't cook that often. Uh, right. Oh, there's actually, oh, that's actually kind of useful. I've just seen a conversion table between Celsius and, uh, and Fahrenheit. If you use Fahrenheit, oh, yeah, by the way, Fahrenheit. Right. Yeah, I don't know why. Fahrenheit. It starts at 32 and ends at like 148 or something. Like, what? Yeah, I don't know why they, they use it. They have like right. their own... I'm just going to Google 400 degrees. What? I don't want to Google that. I was about to say what uh, what happens to a human at 400 degrees C, but I don't want that on my search history. Uh, I, but I am curious. I think we all know what happens at I mean, yeah, you just this. fucking die, but... Yeah. 
Uh, right, I, I do just want to quickly... Oh, well done. So, hypothermia is said to occur when the body, when the core body temperature of an, individ of an individual has dropped below 35 Celsius, and the normal core body temperature is 37 Celsius, and hypothermia, which is the hot one, uh, no, hypo is cold, hypo is hot, right? Cold, hot, it's, it's hot. I can never remember which one's which. Uh, let's have a look what happens to the body in extreme heat, because the BBC have an article on it. Don't know why, but they do. Uh, right, let's have a look. Uh, body reacts by increasing blood flow to the skin surface, taking the heat away from the body to the surface. Basically, you sweat. Uh, you sweat a lot. Uh, yeah, basically you just sweat if you get really hot. That's obvious. But what happened to 40, 400 degrees C, not 40 degrees? Oh, scientists identify the maximum heat limit the human body can take. Let's read. Um, uh, I don't actually care about the full report. Just tell me the bloody number. Really, really dangerous. Yeah, that's great. Um... I'm just scrolling through this whole article and it hasn't given me a lot of this out. Yeah, it's, it's fine. fine. You know what? I'm going to quickly pause the recording. I'll be back in a minute, viewers. Okay, right. I got it. Uh, so, uh, it's 35... So, enduring six hours at 35 degrees Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit for you weirdos that use it, uh, coupled with 100% of humidity. So, basically, your sweat just doesn't... No, your sweat instantly evaporates so it does nothing. Uh, and it's called the wet bulb effect, which basically was just uh, they put a wet rag over yes. a light bulb and it got really hot. Uh, and basically, yeah, it was a wet cloth over a thermometer and exposing it to the air. And basically, what? it's the survival limit is 35 degrees C wet bulb temperature re represents 35 degrees C of dry heat as well as 100% humidity or 46 degrees C at 50% humidity. Right. So basically, if there's fifty percent humidity and it's forty six degrees outside, uh, if you're if you if you're there for more more than six hours, you're more than likely uh, it it's fatal. Basically, it leads yeah, to organ much. failure uh, and death. So don't do that, I guess. And it has happened a couple of times before. Apparently, it's uh, it breached around a dozen times, mostly in South Asia, Persian Gulf. Uh, and NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab at one point. But none of them were for long enough to cause any, you know, mass deaths. Although yeah. 61,000 people have died from it, you know, throughout history. I've also looked uh, the body at 400 degrees Celsius. Yep. Uh, the instant heat would mean you lose consciousness, obviously. Obviously. Yeah, the skin would also vaporise, like, instantly. Oh, good. You'd have no intact tissue. The underlying muscles and organs, um, yeah, they would rapidly destruct. So it's just instant death. Um, it also cooks the remaining tissues, bones, organs, muscles, you name it. Oh, so, and, you, just, um, so you just get cooked, basically. Yeah. Okay. Literally, <laughs> rapid death and literally cooked. cooked and then incinerated. Yeah. Cool. Uh, this has been a morbid episode, isn't it? <laughs> Lovely. It was a Halloween special. Yeah, true. It is a Halloween special. So can you can you really... Uh... You know what? I was saving this for a bit of a light, more, heart, more light-hearted episode, but you know what? Uh, sod it. Uh, we've done a dark-themed episode, so we might as well add this in. Oh, it's yeah, called The yeah. Forbidden Experiment. I found out about this a couple oh, okay. of years ago and I've been wanting to tell it to someone ever since purely because it's uh, pretty weird. Right. And seeing as we're most of the way there, I figured I'd, we just, I'd just push us over the edge to the definite weird bit. Uh, okay, so basically uh, they put two children uh, who were raised on an island uh with a mute woman uh, who wasn't their mother. So the woman couldn't, couldn't right. talk and the children were raised on an island uh, and the woman wasn't their mother. 
right? So after a certain age and uh, knowing that they could, you know, make noises, um, the children made their own language. Uh, scientists oh, right. basically later determined that it was a unique language, not spoken before, but somewhat resembled Latin. So for some reason, Latin is just a language that is universal to everything. I mean, it's a dead that language now because yeah. no one speaks to it. Uh, but yeah, yeah I mean, like most languages are like or most European languages are based on Latin. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the experiment was deemed forbidden because, uh, well, they took the lives away from the children and forced them to live up their lives on an island with a woman who couldn't speak, who wasn't their mother. Um, and they basically just created their own language. Oh, right. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, I thought it was quite yeah, interesting. Bizarre, yeah. um, I mean, science did some weird shit back in the 1900s where we basically just went, what if we did this? Yeah, all right, fuck it, let's do it. It's when like, all ethics and morals just like go out the window. Cause... Yeah, and that's how we got the current ethics code in psychology. Uh, you got stuff like Zimbardo, Ash, uh, Zim uh, which one was Zimbardo? I think that was the Stanford Prison Experiment, I think. Where basically they I have just no idea. Okay, so basically Stanford Prison Experiment. Uh, this is not psychology revision, by the way. If anyone is currently doing a psychology A level, this is me doing it. This is me trying to remember it three years after it's been done. Uh, it's basically when people signed up to do a prison study, where basically they went in a fake prison and see how life was. Uh, they were randomly assigned into uh, police and criminals. Uh, the crimin the quote unquote criminals who were just regular people at the time uh, were basically uh, abducted from their homes uh, right. before the day before the experiment was due to start uh, and were sent into this quote unquote prison which was just a basement I'm pretty sure uh, of the university they were staying at um, and basically the quote unquote policemen who were also participants uh, went mad with power yeah. Uh, and it basically just showed that people with power go mad sometimes, um, especially in this kind of situation. I, could, I don't remember what it actually showed, but I remember learning about it in psychology. It's been three years since I last remembered it. So, yeah, it's kind of fucked. Uh, but, yeah, basically the 1900s science and psychology probably wasn't a great time to be a participant in one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, um, and for those of you wondering, Ash was basically where they gaslit people. In modern, in modern words, basically they showed a, they showed pictures of three lines, and then uh, one was obviously uh, larger than the rest or smaller. There was a small, medium, and large one basically, uh, and they got they various people got asked which one's the largest, and then uh, they brought in some people that were in on the experiments they knew so they would purposefully get it wrong because they'd say the middle one was the largest and then they found that anything basically if you've got three other people that say something you're more likely to go away to go with it so if i say i don't know ducks are now mammals and yeah, not birds, yeah three if three or more people in the room say it and you have no idea what you're talking about uh you're more than likely going to go along with it so i could say i don't know a duck egg is actually I don't know, worth five thousand pounds, and the next person says it. Then the next person says it. The fourth person, even if they don't, even if they think it's wrong, they'll go, "Yeah, all right, fine." They'll yeah. cave basically. Um, that one was slightly yeah, less fucked, yeah. but it was a thing. Uh, yeah, weird ass episode. Um, so I think on that note, I think we're going to end it. It's a bit of a shorter one, we know, um, but it's a weird one and it's a spooky special. So. Yeah. <laughs> go enjoy your Halloween, I guess. If you're watching this on Halloween, uh go and I don't know, terrorize some kids. I don't know. Terrorize. <laughs> Probably the wrong word, but yeah. Right. Have fun viewers. Uh if you guys have enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, you can go ahead and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.